To imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Hall. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Horn, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you good, sir. What brings you here? Your Eminence, with all due respect, I prefer to keep my reasons for coming here to myself. I promise, it has nothing to do with the legendary party that you all appear to be preparing for. I believe what you will, my son. However, everything is related to the legendary parties organized by our host. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that, Cardinal. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. And you, Duchess? You seem to be quite accustomed to things here, am I right? I do not think that one can ever get accustomed to what Lord Mortimer prepares for his guests. But you are right, this is not the first time I've been on this wharf. If you've come back again, I imagine you must find it to be of some interest. Here, everything is possible if you make the right choices. It really is up to you whether you leave better off or not. Please excuse me if you find me overly curious, young man. I did not mean to cause you any embarrassment. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A Cardinal? A Duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sara de Rich, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, your eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but... Given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew, my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the Church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. <sighs> if only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is commendable. But as we work together on a daily basis, it is surely just an oversight. Most certain. You said you work together. What do you do exactly? Be it mother or myself, our motto has always been discretion in all things, and to promise to never betray a word of honor. Was your secret safe with mother? It will be even more so with me. You have convinced me. The mystery with which your mother manages her business proves that she carries your motto close to her heart. Your words seem sincere, my son. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Ah, uh, I hesitate. 
Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see her. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean, yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm, what to do? Can you see a solution? Come on, just give me the letter for crying out loud. I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Bingo! Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother would read it? Your Eminence, that is just not possible for me. Why is that? I have always had a Cartesian mind, and I won't make false promises. I respect you too much for that. I spend my time trying to find logical and reasonable answers to problems which, at first glance, seem supernatural. I'm not saying I don't believe in God as a concept. I just don't believe in the God of your sacred texts. And I don't want to lie to you. Even though your answer does shock me, my son, I shall only hear your honesty. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Riche. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the cursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priest's safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains. Louis, come join us. Monsieur, may I introduce you to Monseigneur His Eminence, Cardinal Piaggi? He joins us straight from Rome. Oh, just call me Your Eminence. It's simpler. George Washington, President of the United States of America. Delighted at last to make your acquaintance, Mr. President. Pleased to meet you, Mr. President. Louis Maurras de Richet, it is an honor to meet you. Young man, let's keep it simple, please. Let us forget our fancy titles. Nice to meet you, Louis. I should imagine you never thought you'd be in such company. I must admit that I didn't. It's the first time that I've ever met so many illustrious personalities. And you haven't seen anything yet. Generally, when Lord Mortimer organizes one of his receptions, there are over a dozen people here. They can't all be here yet. And you'll see, most of the time there's only the upper crust. And I noticed you were already getting to know his eminence at the entrance. It's the perfect place to build up a network. What were you talking about, if you forgive my indiscretion? At the risk of disappointing you, we weren't conspiring in our corner, sir. His eminence was simply telling me that he knew my mother and how much he held her in high esteem. It so happens that Monsieur de Riche's mother is to join us. Oh, pity. No scrumptious gossip or juicy tidbits, unmentionable secrets, or even money matters. But you'll see, it will come. Despite all the goodwill in the world, you can't stop people scheming left and right around oh, here. Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, do any of you know the reason why we're here this time? Not in the slightest. 
As for me, I've been invited by Sir Holm, a close friend of Lord Mortimer, but uh, I do not know the reason why. You see, Louis, every time Lord Mortimer organizes a reception, he always finds a moment to set up a chat with all the guests. During which time we remake the world. Accompanied by gallons of absinthe and cussing, I'll leave you to imagine the result. So, if I understand rightly, Monsieur de Richer, you've come out here to join your mother. For what reason, exactly? Like you, Mr. President, I'm here as a result of Lord Mortimer's invitation. Two members of the same family here. That is rare. You know what they say. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your family. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I know your mother well. Stay behind with me afterwards, and we'll take a moment to speak about her. Good Lord! Washington is wearing the emblem of the Grand Master of the Golden Order. It's the highest distinction of the Order in the United States. It puts him on par with my mother. He must really know his stuff when it comes to the occult. Good evening, my friends. Holy shit. That's the man for my vision. An urgent case has delayed our host, Lord Mortimer. He can't be present this evening, and he sends his deepest apologies. He's asked me here and he hasn't even turned up? Great start. Do you know that man? Sir Gregory Holm, an English aristocrat. Very influential. He's also close to Lord Mortimer. So, don't be surprised if he acts like he's at home. And now, my dear guests, a light meal is served in the small salon. For those who would like to, you're invited to follow me into the next room. My dear fellow, you must have read my thoughts. I shall follow. We'll have to be careful not to make too much noise. One of Lord Mortimer's guests is relaxing. Oh. We shall be quiet. Don't take it the wrong way, Sir Holm, but I have already eaten. Thus, I shall be happy to remain by the fireside. If you don't mind, Gregory, I should like to keep Mr. Washington company. Please feel at home. And you, sir? If I stay with Washington, we'll be able to speak about my mother. But on the other hand, I'd like to learn more about this Holm. I saw him in my vision. My vision is more important. Let's follow home. I'll follow you, sir. Mr. Washington, I hope to speak with you at greater length on another occasion. Emily, please excuse me, but I would like to speak to Sir Holm. I shall see you later. My friend, I hope our dear Giovanni is well. Ah, uh, the troubles in France have fatigued him, but he will recover slowly. Do not fear. He apologizes for remaining in Rome. The voyage was too much for him. And right he was too. The mildness of the Mediterranean, eh? Come, sit down and have something to eat, my friend. You look rather pale. Excuse me, sir. I have been neglecting my duty. I haven't introduced myself. Sir Gregory Holm, an old friend of Lord Mortimer's. A real pleasure, sir. You who must be well used to the court of France, how do you find this peaceful little haven? Charming, if I hadn't come here for disturbing reasons. Yes, I heard the news. What a story. Indeed. I wanted to ask you. Would you have any information about the disappearance of my mother? Ah, uh, very little, I'm afraid, my young friend. Your mother came at the invitation of Lord Mortimer. Then, one fine day, we couldn't find her anywhere. That's it? As I said, I don't know very much. Lord Mortimer had the entire area searched immediately. We found no clue as to her disappearance. But I am convinced that as soon as Lord Mortimer becomes available, he will explain the situation. Thank you for your answers, Sir Holm. But I beg your pardon. I get the impression I know you. Have we met? Except in my dreams, of course. Not that I remember, young man. Uh, perhaps you are mistaking me for another member of the Chamber of Lords. And what with the wig and the powder, it wouldn't be the first time. No, you were definitely the one I saw threatening my mother. I thought... 
Never mind. It'll come back to me. Would you allow me one last question, sir? I don't want to take up all your time. Uh, please, go ahead. Um, what do you want to know? Could my mother have had a problem with someone during her stay here? No, not at all. Your mother has always been charming company, and everyone got on very well with her. Not even a servant? <laughs> Certainly not. Everyone gets on well with the famous Sara de Riche, my <gasps> insisted that you rest in your room. Do you want me to call someone? Let me handle this. I'm used to this kind of thing. Miss, can, can you hear me? Leave me. It's just a dizzy spell. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Her heart rate is already becoming more stable. Wow, poor girl's had her hands tattooed. I've seen these pinnacles before in old occult books from the end of the 12th century. I don't know what that young woman's trying to protect herself from, but she definitely takes it seriously. I'm so sorry, I... Can you tell me something about her? The dizzy spell is harmless, but her general condition is frankly alarming. You seem to know her. What is she suffering from? I don't know exactly, but her father sent her to us in the hope that she would recover all her faculties. It would appear she suffers from episodes of dementia. Is she aggressive? Sometimes, but only toward herself. She has never hit out at anyone else, I can assure you of that. She wasn't like that this morning. Something must have upset her. That's one way to put it. The poor girl is exhausted, but that's not the cause of her problem. You're all right, Elizabeth. Do you feel any better? When did she arrive? Uh, four days ago. Okay. My mother had already gone missing. Are you all right, Elizabeth? You gave us quite a fright. Take it easy, miss. Let me... I just need to get back to my room. Of course, my dear. Go ahead. You saw it, didn't you? Pardon me? Isegne della bestia. Sorry, Your Eminence. I don't speak Italian. Ah, forget it. It doesn't matter. Gentlemen, it's getting late. It is time for everyone to go to bed. It has been a long day. Ladies, gentlemen, I bid you all good night. Mr. President, Your Eminence, Duchess, you have the same rooms as usual. You, Monsieur de Richet, will find your room at the end of the corridor. Well, my friends, I am bone tired. I am off to my bed. See you in the morning. Good night, sir. I shall do likewise. Louis, I shall see you in the morning. Sleep well. Good night. See you tomorrow. Oh, man. It's been quite a day. Right. So what shall I do with this letter? It might be about my mother's disappearance. But if I open it, I'll be betraying Piaggi's trust. What should I do? So, it really is a list of French countrymen. Piaggi wasn't lying. Ah, my son. Oh, you are a godsend. What's the matter, Your Eminence? I believe a Miss Adams may be in danger. What do you mean? Do you hear that? She is being manhandled in this small salon. By whom? I don't know exactly. Uh, a thug, a Frenchman it seems. By the cut of his cloth I'd say he's a member of the French revolutionary government. You should do something, my son.
You're right. That sounds like it might be bad. Good lord, that's all I needed. How am I supposed to keep Adams busy now? Do you know if the man is armed? No, I don't. Uh, I barely saw him. If this thing starts to sound serious, call the servants for help. I certainly will. Ah, thank you, my son. May God watch over you. Your Eminence, what are you doing here? I was worried about you, my son. Uh, how did it go with Miss Adams? Don't worry about that anymore, Your Eminence. I had to step in, but everything's under control. <laughs> what an adventure, my son. <laughs> I am relieved to hear it. You acted as a good Christian. In these troubled times, we need more men of your caliber. It's nothing, Your Eminence. I did what I had to do. Well, you did the opposite. Good. Well, thanks for the news. My son, I have another problem. I wanted to speak to you about something important. Do you still have my letter on you? The one I gave you in the home? Why do you ask? I have a name to add to it. Here it is. Thank you, my son. Ah, I see that it's still sealed. I was right to put my trust in you, now give me one second, please. I can't imagine what would have happened if I hadn't added this name to the list. Please, be sure to give this letter to Sarah the moment you see her. You can count on it. Have a good night. Dear friends, I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army, and Jacques Peru, French Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing it? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted. Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. <laughs> Surprisingly, no Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. Well, Your Eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, the sin of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Waldner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that Your Eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. This isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing, dear minutes. But. I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. To tell you the truth, not really. You are right. Be positive. Perhaps Sarah is in the company of Lord Mortimer and they will both turn up shortly. <laughs> but while I have you with me, I... I have a question for you. Go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? 
If I said to you, were all eyes size you up, would it mean anything to you? I don't know if it's the place you're looking for, Louis, but it makes me think of the portrait gallery. There's a gallery here? Can you tell me where to find it, please? Of course. Just go through the door at the end. It will lead into the library. Continue all the way through, and you'll end up in the gallery. You'll see it, Louis. When you get there, you'll know. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. Your Eminence, I imagine that you've heard the news about Miss Adams. Oh, what a tragedy, my son. How could uh, such a thing have happened? That's exactly what I'm trying to find out. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary last night? Mm -hmm. I saw the young French soldier, Bonaparte, I believe, uh, hanging around near Miss Adams' room. But I would not want to get an innocent man into trouble, Louis. It's uh, probably nothing. Not to worry, Your Eminence. If he is innocent, then he has nothing to fear. Do you know why Monsieur Bonaparte was hanging around her room like that? Well, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that the dashing young soldier had become infatuated with a fragile young woman who looked a bit lost. But I don't think he got a very warm welcome. Bonaparte and Adams? <laughs> but they didn't even know each other, did they? I couldn't say that. One last thing. You must know that Peru hit young Adams on the evening of our arrival. He apparently violently attacked her in the small salon. Do you know anything else about the attack? Oh, unfortunately not. I arrived too late to intervene. Young Miss Adams had already been submitted to the foul louts rat. Otherwise, you can believe me, it would not have happened. King of France is dead, gentlemen. Our monarchies are in danger. I have said it before. How dare they? Oh, dear. Oh, as if it oh, gracious. is not the point. Friends, friends, let us calm down. Don't pretend to be surprised. He got a fair trial. Ridiculous. Bastard. He was sentenced to death by 361 votes to 360. You beheaded the king for one vote! Is that your democracy? What an obnoxious act! Until this, anything was possible. This political coup will have grave consequences. France is lost. Gentlemen, please, let us take a step back a moment. In the name of holiness, he was the highest representative of God in France, Emily. Gentlemen, Duchess, we're all among people of reputable company here. We should be able to manage the conflicts of our nations in a respectful and orderly manner. I fully agree with you, sir. But that's enough, sir. Ah, Louis. Just the man. Good Lord. How did the king come to be executed? I would think that the order would have intervened. Your Eminence, I haven't been following the case. I'm sure that the Order did everything in its power. Unfortunately, you know the situation in Paris, and... Well, it's chaotic at best. Anything can happen in those revolutionary tribunals. The King is the official representative of God on Earth, my son. Your Eminence, France has become a secular state. The King was just another citizen to them. He refused to admit his errors, looked down upon them, and attempted to escape. What did he expect? France has lost all reason, Louis. I invite you to speak about it with my mother as soon as she reappears. Uh, is there any news of her? I... well, I hope it won't be long before I find her, Your Eminence. Louis, I'm counting on you. If you don't find Sarah before my departure, I must ask you to give me back the letter I gave you. Well, don't worry about that, Your Eminence. Now you wanted to speak to me. I'm sure a man like you is in the circle of trust. Would you know what the conference that Lord Mortimer mentioned is going to be about? 
Not really, my son. Well, be it Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory, uh, we are never informed about the theme of the conference before it begins. If I say the nightmare to you, does it make you think of anything? Hmm. Your question is strange, my son. Difficult to say. Could you at least tell me a little more about the context? Well, I mean, if it were a place or an object found on this island, what would you think of first? Hmm. The nightmare. No. I don't see anything. I'm sorry. Well, that's too bad. Ah, wait! I suppose it might be that horrible painting hanging in Lord Mortimer's study. Pretend not to be that interested. Right. Well, don't worry about it. I was... I was just curious. I was wondering what to think of that Manuel Godoy. He is reputed to be a very ambitious character, at every level. But his fate is unwavering. He is a staunch defender of the Church. You can believe me. As to his faith, I have no doubt. However, his ambition seems to surpass his morality. And I hope that it will not solely the crown. You can say that again. The blue eyes of the latest Infanta, Maria Isabel, have left everyone wondering. Rumors always accompany men of power, Your Eminence. Naturally. But the number of awards and titles granted by the Queen during these past four years leaves little doubt. So, Godoy really is this out-and-out -out rascal who uses his charm on the Queen. Thank you for everything, Your Eminence. I shan't take up any more of your time. You are welcome, my son. I will be seeing you, Louis. This note is about a meeting with Lord Mortimer. There's no doubt about it. All right, I need to find out where the sword that came with it's from in order to find Mother. You're choking, I hope. Don't tell me you've done that. Really? How do you expect me to guess? Oh, for God's sake, just ask them. We must absolutely inform Sir Gregory. How long has he been trying to collect all the spears? I must have brought him the first one twenty odd years ago. Do you know if he has managed to get the original? Well, in any case, he's got all the ones we had at the Vatican. He made me replace them with copies. But I don't understand your reaction. I'm sure it is nothing serious. Uh -huh. I can see very well you do not understand. You have done nothing less than sign our death warrants, and still you don't understand. I... Someone is listening. What? Monsieur de Richet, why not join us rather than find yourself eavesdropping? Well, I, 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 I didn't want to interrupt you. I, I'm sorry. Of course you didn't. So, my son, what can we do for you? I didn't mean to spy on you, but... You caught my attention. Your Eminence, I don't know what you said to Mr. Von Volner, but the poor fellow looks positively crestfallen. Not at all. No, don't, don't you believe it, Louis. I was just telling Monsieur about Lord Mortimer's burning passion for holy relics. You must have noticed he's a bit of a collector. Well, for years, he has been searching high and low to bring all the copies of the Holy Spear together. As I was coming here, I thought I'd bring him a few of them. That's all. Be quiet, for God's sake. Uh, please leave us, monsieur. His eminence and I wish to finish our discussion alone. Leave us now. My son, glad you're here. 
It seems, Lord Mortimer has been waiting for you to arrive before beginning. What a pity your mother isn't here for the conference. I hope I'll be able to see her before I leave. I still have a very important letter to give to her. Senor Godoy, you must know that France will soon ban these barbaric practices. Oh, do not get on your high horse, Monsieur Frenchman. The only reason why France has ceased trading in slaves is because of the commercial blockade that Great Britain has imposed against you. The instant the shipping lanes have been restored, France will again treat these people like cattle. Come now, my friends. Let us not digress. Anyway, these primitive people have no souls, Louis. We bring the good word to them in order to save them. You'll see. Colonization brings with it many benefits, too. Uh, excuse me, if you don't mind, Your Eminence, uh, I shall continue. Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? On the maps of Italy I saw in Mortimer's secret study, he had anticipated movements of troops across Italy. I wouldn't be surprised if he's planning an invasion of Italy by France, and if I push the notion a bit further, I can well imagine that Bonaparte's cannons, financed by the Order, will be used for that purpose. The noose is tightening around poor Piaggi's neck without him even realizing it. I don't know if I'm the best person to speak about that, Your Eminence. Well, I think that the French army will enter Italy, and that the Vatican will do whatever France demands of it, if the Vatican wants to retain its place. You are joking, I hope. Lord Mortimer! I did not come here to listen to such nonsense. What makes you think that, Monsieur de Richet? Well, Monsieur Bonaparte, here present, has ordered a large number of cannons, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were to be used to keep Italy under control. Come, sir. What a strange idea. I have enough on my plate with issues in Corsica. If you say so. You see, you But Corsica is not where the cannons are to be delivered, is it? Aye, but... Ah, Louis, you are quick-witted. I like you. You seem to be overlooking something, Messieurs les Français. I also have backers, who would be only too pleased to demonstrate the full extent of their fervor by defending the Vatican. Mi auguro che insegnerete l'educazione a questo giovanotto presuntuoso, Sir Gregory. I hope that you will teach this pretentious young man some manners, Sir Gregory. It looks like I won't be just making friends here. How can he be so blind? If he keeps this up, he'll lead our countries to their destruction. Don't worry, we shall counter him, Sir Gregory. We have to act immediately. Calm down, Gregory. We only have to vote against his project, and that's it. They haven't got a chance. Just one vote will suffice. True. There is no chance of a unanimous vote. And he knows it. He must be preparing something else. What is he plotting? I know about his plan. What did you just say, Louis? His aim is for the United States to take the whole of the North American continent. But that is impossible! A democratic superpower? I don't understand. That has nothing to do with the coming vote. You will ask for France to take over Louisiana, and then hand it over to the United States, and so double the size of their territory. Once that's done, he will just need to push a bit more, and you will lose North America, Duke Manuel. God's blood! Has he gone mad? No, Johan. He has always been mad. <sighs> Louis, I would like to thank you for what you've just revealed. If not for you, I don't know if we'd have been capable of deciphering his plans quickly enough 
to be able to counter him. What are we going to do now that we know about it? Destroy him. No! We'll beat him at his own game, my friends. His plan begins with Louisiana, which is still yours, Duke Manuel. He will begin with you. Expect to receive an envoy, French most probably. He will try to convince you by every possible means. Whatever he says, whatever he promises, you have just one response. It's war. If war is what you want, war is what you'll get. And on your own territory, in your homes. Enough games. Spain will join the coalition against France and declare war. You too, Duchess Hillsborough. You will speak to the Queen so that Great Britain commits to going to war with France. What do you expect from the Papal States, Sir Gregory? What do you think? That they hold a mass? They will go to war, of course. What is it that you didn't understand in what I just told you? We all declare war on France. Militarily, politically, and financially. And me, Sir Gregory? How can I help? Louis, you have won my trust. The Order will have to act in France, but even before that, I'm going to need you. Right here and right now. Leave me now. I have to prepare for tomorrow. Let's meet early tomorrow morning for the next phase of the conference, which promises to be most exciting. Uh, Louis? I'd like to see you a moment, please. My friends, do not worry. I assure you that Lord Mortimer's plan will never see the light of day. I shall deal with informing our allies, but for the time being, I need you to make a stand. What do you think about Monsieur de Richet? I don't know yet. I feel there's great potential in him. He looks like he can be trusted. Why isn't he with us? He was opposed to Mortimer. I'll wait and see. I'm still not sure of his position. And uh, Duchess Hillsborough? Oh, why isn't she here? She's busy. Don't worry about her. Oh, isn't it time to replace her? Not so fast, sir. She is an important figure. You ought to have a little more faith in her. What are we going to do about Washington? He will be a hard nut to crack. On our chessboard, he is Mortimer's king. Don't worry. Mr. President only wants one thing, to keep his dear America united. He won't jeopardize everything he has achieved on a whim. He has been serving Mortimer for quite some time. It won't be easy to uh, bring him around. I have asked Monsieur de Richet to approach him. Let us have faith in him. I sense that Mr. Peru is about to surprise us too. Yet he is Mortimer's strong arm in France. He knows his time has come, and I believe he's intelligent enough to realize it means he is no longer any use to Mortimer. Do you feel all right, Mr. Godoy? You haven't said a word. Please excuse me, gentlemen. I feel tired. Oh, I see. I think it is high time you left us then. Now! I don't understand. I spoke to him only recently. Monsieur Perrault has lost his mind. It's obvious. Yet another way for the French to make a spectacle of themselves. Well, once again it has worked. My friends, let us settle down, please. We are all in shock, of course. Let us celebrate Louis's courage. He enabled us to avert a tragedy. Yes, that was very noble of you, Louis. You have given us all a fine lesson in courage. I... thank you. He owes you his life. That's quite something. That madman deserves to die. We are providing Monsieur Peru with care, but rest assured, he is no longer a danger to himself or anyone else. I think everyone needs a little rest. Good God! They're all here. They must have heard the gunshot. Where is Lord Mortimer? Can anyone hear anything through the door?
Did you hear that? I was not dreaming, was I? Certainly not, Duke Godoy. What's going on? Someone had the bang coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Gentlemen, go back to your rooms. Go back to your rooms. I shall find out from Lord Mortimer what this is all about. Thank you. I have no time to lose, so I might as well not bother him. My dear Giuseppe, poor health forbids me from joining you. Please thank Sir Gregory for his invitation to Lord Mortimer's. I'm convinced you'll be able to strengthen our agreements. Please tell Sir Gregory that his enterprise concerning our friend Cardinal Bishop Chiarmanti is following its course. I place my trust in you. May God bless you and give you protection. S.S. Giovanni Angelico Braschi. Satan summoning his legions. This is rather surprising for the decoration of a cardinal's room. Torquemada. Quite the contrast. Wow. The fanatical priest who created the Inquisition. Sends shivers down the spine. Venus and Cupid with a satyr by Correggio. Innocence, indiscretion, and lechery. Giuseppe must love that. The Lying Girl by Boucher. Here's a painting of mischievous eroticism. I wonder what Piaggi must think of this. The Rape of the Daughters of Lucipus by Rubens. Surprising choice for his eminence Piaggi. Love Triumphant by Caravaggio. Now there's someone for whom the sex of angels is no mystery. His Holiness Pope Pius VI by Pompeo Petoni. This should help Piaggio feel at home. Monsignor, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Ah, Louis, come in. Your timing is impeccable. I wanted to have a word with you. Oh, here we go. I was wondering how you are getting on in your search for our poor Sarah. You must have made some progress, I should think. I am terribly worried about her, you know. Come on, get out of here, Louis. You're in a hurry. Any news of her? Unfortunately not, no. Are you sure? You know, Louis, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I sense you are worried and that you are not telling me everything. What exactly did you come looking for in my room? What do you mean? Louis, I was not born yesterday, you know. When you came in, I saw in your face a hint of disappointment at finding me here. I concluded that you were hoping you wouldn't run into me. You came here for something else. No, no, you're mistaken. I was just passing by. I shall leave you, Your Eminence. I wouldn't want to take up your time. As you wish, Louis. See you later. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Ah, Louis, come in. Your timing is impeccable. I wanted to have a word with you. Oh, here we go.
I was wondering how you are getting on in your search for our poor Sarah. You must have made some progress, I should think. I am terribly worried about her, you know. Come on, get out of here, Louis. You're in a hurry. Any news of her? I don't know why, Your Eminence, but I get the impression you're asking a question to which you already know the answer. Yeah, let's say I have heard the rumors, but I prefer to ask you the question directly. Well, what have you heard exactly? It would appear that your mother is implicated in the death of the Duchess's twin sister. Oh, what a story, all the same. Twins? I was always wary of the Duchess anyway. I did not appreciate the facility with which she would flaunt her assets. You know, Louis, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I sense you are worried and that you are not telling me everything. What exactly did you come looking for in my room? What do you mean? Louis, I was not born yesterday, you know. When you came in, I saw in your face a hint of disappointment at finding me here. I concluded that you were hoping you wouldn't run into me. You came here for something else. I'm looking for a cross, Your Eminence, so I thought you might be able to help me. You are asking me for a crucifix? You wouldn't want St. Benedict, would you? Oh, it's a cross that's commonly used for exorcisms, isn't it? What does he imagine I'm preparing for, for crying out loud? No, no, I'm, I'm looking for one of the crosses of Claymont III. Ah. Very well. Well, you are in luck. I do indeed have one. Oh, do you think you could lend it to me for a few hours, please? Uh, first, though, you'll have to answer a few questions, my dear fellow. It's win-win. Well, I thought you were more charitable, Father. Charity begins at home, Louis. Actually, it's quite simple. You want my cross? And I want some answers. I think we ought to get on fine, don't you? I need that cross. I must not speak to him about my mother at all costs. What exactly are you involved in, Louis? If only you knew. That's what I've been asking myself every day since I came to this island. And, well, most of the time, I haven't the faintest idea. Louis. I understand that all this may seem unsettling to you, but be patient, my son. I am sure that once you have learned the ropes, you will be like a fish in water. Where was I now? Ah, yes. Ever since your arrival, I've seen you rushing about all over the place, uh, apparently trying to find Sarah. Uh, we both know how big this island is. Even if Sarah was disguised as a bush, she would not be able to escape our vigilance for long. You must have already found her. She needs help, Louis. We are friends, she and I. Won't you just tell me where she is? Your Eminence, if I were sure that you were not asking me all these questions with the sole intention of passing on my answers to the others, then I would be able to answer you. Oh, Louis. How can you doubt my integrity? Can you swear to God that you will not reveal to Lord Mortimer or Sir Gregory where my mother is located? Well, that all depends on your revelations, Louis. You see, Sir Gregory and myself are... Promise me before God. Wait, no, I... Promise before God, or I will tell you nothing. Louis, don't... Drop it, your eminence. We are unable to reach an understanding. Just never mind. Louis, tell me at least why you want the Clement the Third Cross. I am sure that you are aware that this is the cross that Lord Mortimer gave to me when we first met. That was the day I decided to take the cloth. It cannot be a coincidence. Please, I beg you. Why the cross of Pope Clement? Your 
your eminence. I sense that evil is rampant in these parts. Help me. I need protection. Please let me have the cross. I beseech you. Of course, my son. Do not fear. It will give you protection. Never will I leave a true believer in such depravity. Louis, thank you for trusting me. I shall not forget it. You can take my cross. Here. But please return it to me once you have finished with it. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You're a lifesaver. I have no time to lose, so I might as well not bother him. the band coming from the Duchess's room, and she isn't answering. Monseigneur, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. The Cardinal's not in his room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself. My dear Giuseppe, poor health forbids me from joining you. Please thank Sir Gregory for his invitation to Lord Mortimer's. I'm convinced you'll be able to strengthen our agreements. Please tell Sir Gregory that his enterprise concerning our friend Cardinal Bishop Chiarmanti is following its course. I place my trust in you. May God bless you and give you protection. S.S. Giovanni Angelico Braschi Bazant. Amber crystals. Let's have a look at his personal papers. Of course, it's in Latin, the language of the church. All those hours of learning Latin declensions are going to pay off in the end. Mother will be proud. Now this could be interesting. Lancea Sancte, various representation criteria, of which are shown the most common throughout the centuries, and in different forms. If Piaggi's notes are anything to go by, the weapon I'm looking for is shaped like a tapered spear, and that should help me identify it. Cardinal's not in his room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself. Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well. I, I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you, you could... You not listening to me. You are playing with fire. I heard you speak to Mr. Von Volner about it, and I was wondering if you could tell me something about it. That was a private conversation. How could I have known that he was listening to us? Hmm... I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lands, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. His nose is bleeding. So you are looking for the holy lance of Longinus, are you?
Your Eminence, you're worrying me. What is happening to you? Nothing to me. Just a moment of weakness, but I'm better now. I am all ears. You are looking for the lance. You should know, you are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? Briefly with President Washington. What does he know exactly? Absolutely nothing. He advised me to speak to Mr. Von Volner. Very well. Is that all? Well, I spoke to Mr. Von Volner about it. Why? Because you are endangering all those who know anything about this lance, Louis. Anyone else? Yes, my mother knows about it. Of course, Sarah. Who else? No one else. What are you going to use the lance for, exactly? If I told you why I needed this lance, you would never believe it. Trust me. You can tell me anything. It's our only chance to vanquish the demons. Oh, my dear God, Louis. You sound just like Sarah. Do you realize you are following the same path? Step by step. Sarah also started by imagining things. She too spoke of demons, I am told. She could no longer speak to anyone, and saw a hidden monster in every guest, lurking in the shadows, ready to devour her. You must let us help you. Louis, I thank you for your sincerity. I shall answer you about Longinus. You deserve to be told. His spear-headed lance did indeed pierce the side of the Messiah. His blood gushed out, covering the head of the lance. It was covered in the blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Your Eminence. You are welcome. Be careful, Louis. You are on a perilous path. Don't follow Sarah's demons, my boy. Don't delve too deeply into her delusions or you won't be able to come back. The demons that she is frantically trying to drive away are in her own mind. Take good care of yourself. God keep you. Your Eminence, would you have a moment to spare? Not now, Louis. Please, leave me alone. I beg your pardon? I want to be alone. Very well. I. I'm only searching for information about the Lance of Longinus, the soldier. If you, you could... Are not listening to me. You are playing with fire. I heard you speak to Mr. Von Volner about it, and I was wondering if you could tell me something about it. That was a private conversation. How could I have known that he was listening to us? Hmm. I see what you mean. Louis, don't push it. Leave while you still can. Your Eminence, are you all right? Your Eminence, are you with me? Can you turn around, please? What do you want to know about the Holy Lance, Louis? Your Eminence, turn around. This is the weapon used by a Roman centurion on the very day Christ was nailed to the cross. Look at me. Longinus thrust his lance in the right side of Jesus. Please. As you wish. So, you are looking for the Holy Lance of Longinus, are you? Of course not, Your Eminence. Come now, Louis. Please, don't insult me. It's just a pity that you have no idea why you are looking for it. You are looking for the Lance. You should know, you are not the only one. Lord Mortimer has spent a good part of his life and his fortune trying to find it. Never will he let you have it. But tell me, before going any further, have you spoken to anyone else about this? No. You are the first I've spoken to about it, Your Eminence. Calm now, Louis. Are you quite sure of that? No, no, Your Eminence. 
I thought you'd be the only one able to help me with it. Your words lack conviction, Louis. If I'm asking you all these things, it's for your own good. You have no reason to lie to me. Louis, you should abandon your project. I say this for your own good. You will only get burned if you embark on this enterprise. Lead the lands where it is. Too many people have suffered because of it. Please excuse me, Your Eminence. I'm, I'm in a terrible hurry. Of course you are. And you won't listen to my advice. Don't worry about me, Your Eminence. Everything is fine. Good luck. I haven't the time. His Holiness awaits my report. Okay, let's not waste any more time. <laughs> I deduce that you're impatient to master what's in store for you. That is good. I thought I'd mix business with pleasure for this first time. What do you mean by that? The conference will come to a close shortly, as you know. Not that I'm fed up with archaic diplomacy, but it's time to ensure the success of this project. To make this happen, I would like Piaggi to inform the Pope he has changed signs. You... you're going to use your powers to alter the votes? The real game is about to begin, Louis. Up till now, the guests have been sizing each other up. From now on, it's time for Gregory and myself to play. As well as you yourself. Now, here is my plan. I would like you to join His Eminence in his room. Just play along. We'll see when the time comes. Very well. And then? You're going to have to trust me. What we're going to do is painless for the human you are going to invade. Invade? Yes. You're going to enter his mind and take control. You're going to influence his actions and his psyche. Make him speak, then concentrate. You must focus on him in order to feel his thoughts. Then? While speaking, you must link with him. Once you're done, you will naturally find your way to the source and enter into his thoughts. But what if I fail? Trust in your instincts. You just have to let yourself go. You have the skill. Let your nature come to the fore. You'll see. If you fail, you'll be in for some light banter with his eminence. That's all. There's nothing to be afraid of. Very well. Perfect. Go now. The Cardinal is in his room. You will have to write a letter to the Pope, as if Piaggi had written it himself. In this letter, tell the Pope that whatever happens during the conference, he must follow my propositions. But be careful. In order to protect himself from counterfeiters, the Pope had Piaggi's hand tattooed with a symbol to be sure of his identity. You'll see when you're inside him. You'll understand. Once it's written up, just bring it back to me, and I'll send it off immediately. All right. I'll take care of it. Monseigneur, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Ah, well. Louis, what brings you back to my chambers? May I sit down? Of course, Louis. Don't you feel good? Yes, but... If I'm gonna pass inside you, I'd better sit myself down first. It's nothing, don't worry about it. Well, what can I do for you? Right. Now I need to concentrate. I wanted to speak to you, Your Eminence. What exactly is your role with regard to the Holy Father? I... What? What on earth is he playing at? It's coming. You're a cardinal in Pictori. Why don't you admit it? Him. Pertinent little brat. Louis, I don't find this conversation in very good taste. All right, it's coming. Come on, Giuseppe, let me in. What? Uh, uh, I've done it. I've done it, damn it. He was right. This is just crazy. I can't believe it. Look at yourself, Louis. You better not get caught. 
Whoa. I still need to get used to this body. So, let's see about what Mortimer asked me. Right. Well, it's time I got started. Let's see what I can find here to help me write that letter. I have no means to validate my forgery, so I better take my time with and not make any mistakes. There are two letters from the Pope on the desk. I should be able to get a clue or two by checking how well they correspond to each other. And here are three stamps. All are different. Right. Well, let's start writing. Lord Mortimer asked me to discredit Sir Gregory and to announce Piaggi's final vote in his favor. As an introduction, Your Holiness, thank you for your trust. It even appears that Lord Mortimer and Sir Gregory both have access to obscure, superior forces to help them reach their ends. I think the Papal States, for the sake of their own preservation, ought to condemn this practice of conferences in the future. I've already seen the seal. Yes, it looks like the stamp that Piaggi applied to the letter he handed to me. Justizia, misericordia e umulta. Boy, I think it's in Italian. Justice, mercy, and humility. I remember the seal that Piaggi used for the letter he confided me with. Huh, I don't recognize this one. On it is written, Flore in Domo Domini. Latin, it blooms in the house of God. When Piaggi handed me that letter to give to my mother, I noticed the seal, and this one is clearly different. A circle with a cross inside. In one of the letters, the Pope asked Piaggi to change and to stop using his personal stamp. He asked him to use the one with the Pope's motto on it. And I remember that. Flore in Domo Domini. Must be in Latin. There's a kind of code composed of six letters that they always write under the dates of their correspondence. According to Mortimer, it's got something to do with Piaggi's tattoo. I guess I'll have to write one for today's date. Now, ideally, it'd be better to do without it, but I'm going to need to be extremely clever here. Today, the date is 2401-1793. In the letters from the Pope, there are six letters just below the date, two just below the month, four others below the year. Piaggi's tattoo... It must be used to establish a connection between the letter of the concentric circle and the number shown in the middle. Some figures are the same in both codes, yet they correspond to different letters. The day is not translated. That must be the key to the code. Today the date is 2401-1793. 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 Today the date is 2401-1793.
today the date is 2401-1793. Today is the 2401-1793. Your eminence. All ready to send. What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry. He can't hear us. What do you mean he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? Because the old goat is going to drop us. It's a lousy turncoat. Well, he'd better not tell me he just fell asleep. Calm down, my friend. The poor boy has just passed out. We were talking about this and that when suddenly he fainted. Killed over, just like that. Huh, really? What a weakling. Uh, I wonder what Mortimer sees in him. Who knows? I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go? There he is, and there he stays. <laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Uh, uh, no, listen, my son. This is all getting out of hand. Hogwash! I don't trust him in the slightest. Why not? Can you keep a secret? No, I don't think I'd like to know about anything that would justify such an act. I don't know what's wrong with you. But you really must pull yourself together. The conference will soon be on us. And I don't need you falling to pieces now. Don't worry. I shall be there. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? The slime bag. He works for Mortimer. Uh, good thing I already tried to warn Gregory. Committing a crime in my room is out of the question. Think, it will all be on our heads. No doubt about it. I, I refuse to run the risk. Right. Monsieur Von Von, I always act in the best interest of all. I assure you. Everyone's entitled to an opinion. You must have lost your mind to want to take such an extreme course of action. No one's asking you to help me do it. He is capable of reporting me to Sir Gregory. Uh, I'm really risking my neck here. You can't attack him without running the risk of jeopardizing the conference. Even though Sir Gregory has the edge? No. Gregory will never forgive you. Very well, Piaggi. You win. I refuse to let you do the first thing that comes into your head. I don't know what the two of you are up to, but I'll find out sooner or later. Right. Time for me to get back into my body. Right. Don't just stand there, Louis. Mortimer's waiting for you in the Red Salon. Your Eminence, all ready to send... What's he doing here? Damn it. That's all I need. Don't worry. He can't hear us. What do you mean, he can't hear us? What's going on here, Piaggi? Is the old... Goat is going to drop us. It's a lousy turncoat. Well, he'd better not tell me he just fell asleep. Just calm down, calm down. Louis came to see me because he claimed he was hearing voices. We've just finished an exorcism session. An exorcism? Are you having me on? I can't see any exorcism instruments. That's because I've just put them away. I don't know what you're up to, Piaggi. But I do know you're trying to pull one over on me. I was about to fetch someone to take care of him. Would you care to go... There he is. And there he stays. 
<laughs> the perfect opportunity. What do you mean? It's been a while now that I've been hoping for a chance to get rid of him. Uh, uh, no, listen, my son. This is all getting out of hand. Hogwash! I don't trust him in the slightest. Why not? Can you keep a secret? No, I don't think I'd like to know about anything that would justify such an act. I don't know what's wrong with you. But you really must pull yourself together. The conference will soon be on us. And I don't need you falling to pieces now. Don't worry, I shall be there. We've wasted enough time. What if he wakes up? If you don't want to get your hands dirty, just turn away and leave everything to me. This is not a decision to be taken lightly. You're defending him now. What are you talking about? Of course not. He's made you change sides, hasn't he? The slime bag. He works for Mortimer. Uh, good thing I already tried to warn Gregory. Even if I confess, his arguments hit home. So that's it. You don't even bother to hide it. What's the connection between my vote and his life? I knew you would end up changing sides. Listen carefully, Piaggi. If you say anything, you'll be the one they find dead in your bed. Huh? Now, just turn around and let me handle this. Stop! Now! If you don't want to end up the same way, you will do as you are told and vote for what we tell you. Is that understood? I forbid you! Fulner? No! He's infected my body with whatever's in that syringe. He's poisoned me. Get out, Louis. No one must find you here. Well, my friends, here we all are. <coughs> Isn't the Duchess meant to be with us? No, she's resting in her room. Don't worry. The conference can resume. Now, we all know the tensions have been running high, but now is not the moment to give in. The main thing is that just one vote can suffice. To... Yes, indeed. It will only take one of you opposing his project to win the conference. But I would rather have us united until the end. Meanwhile, let us remain on our guard against any last-minute surprises. I know my brother well. He never prepares for war if he has no chance of winning. My friends, here we all are. We are about to definitively shelve Lord Mortimer's absurd project regarding Louisiana. It will only take one of you to oppose it, and we have won. The vote is to be held shortly, so we must keep our guard up. I'm sure Mortimer's preparing something. Don't worry, Sir Gregory. Nothing can stop us now. Beware, Johan. We mustn't underestimate him. So, I'll ask you to return to your rooms and stay there until the conference. And if one of Mortimer's team comes knocking at your door, no matter what, do not open it under any circumstance. Don't give them the opportunity to manipulate you. Is that clear? Understood. Good. Count on me. As you wish. Right. Let us adjourn. Monseigneur, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Your Eminence? Oh, Louis. What can I do for you? Not too nervous about the conference? Even if I add Lord Mortimer's reaction into the equation, I must admit, I don't know how we can lose. It will only take one of us to vote against his project, and the idea will be definitively dropped. <laughs> Knowing Mortimer, I wouldn't be surprised if he still had a few tricks up his sleeve. Hmm. You are thinking about something? Doomed. He knows. 
He knows I'll be voting for Mortima, but how? Scoundrel. He's a traitor. Well, maybe he's managed to motivate some of Sir Gregory's supporters to vote for his project, for example. Bye. No, you can't be serious. Do... Do you know anyone capable of that, Louis? Yes. Yes, I do indeed know someone. Mm. Who then? Double dealing cheat. So you're the mole. Do you really want me to tell you, Your Eminence? What do you mean? I'm not sure that I understand. Confess. I think you know better than anyone who'd be capable of pretending to be on Sir Gregory's side while secretly planning to betray him. What are you saying, Louis? I don't follow you. You are not really suggesting that- Oh, I don't need to suggest anything. The situation seems clearer by the minute. Louis, it's not what you think. I owe William everything. It's thanks to him that I took the holy orders. Off come the masks, your eminence. I beg you, try to understand. I owe him a favor. Of course you do. Louis, I haven't any choice. You don't say no to Mortimer. You know this very well. If you ignore him, you'll sooner or later pay the price. I see. He just has to ask and you give in. I beg you, don't say a word to Sir Gregory, or I'm done for. In the name of your mother, I implore you to keep it to yourself. Very well. I promise. I won't say anything. Oh, thank you, Louis. I knew I could trust you. Sara would be proud of you. Don't push it, Your Eminence. Um, yes, of course. Well, I'll be going. I've got things to do. See you in a while. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Your Eminence? Oh, Louis. What can I do for you? Not too nervous about the conference? Even if I add Lord Mortimer's reaction into the equation, I must admit, I don't know how we can lose. It will only take one of us to vote against his project, and the idea will be definitively dropped. <laughs> Knowing Mortimer, I wouldn't be surprised if he still had a few tricks up his sleeve. Hmm. You are thinking about something? Doomed. He knows. He knows I'll be voting for Mortima. But how? Scoundrel. He's a traitor. I, I was just wondering, exactly how long have you known Lord Mortimer? Well, what are you suggesting, Louis? Are you losing your mind or what? You haven't answered the question. I refuse to play at this game. And I'll ask you to stop making such inappropriate assumptions. I might well have known Lord Mortimer for a very long time, but we have never mixed business interests with our personal affections. Fine. No need to get upset, Your Eminence. It was just a question. Well, your question is wrong. Understood. On that note, if you don't mind, I'll be going, Your Eminence. Perfecto. Please do. So, are you going to tell me if there is a traitor amongst us? Any news of Piaggi? If I were you, I wouldn't count on Cardinal Piaggi. The scoundrel! I've given him everything, and this is how he thanks me. I wouldn't be surprised if he and my father have been close allies for a long time. He'll get what's coming to him. Good. I think we can begin. You will vote in turn on the question that interests us today. Are you for or against the transfer of ownership of Louisiana from Spain to France? Your Eminence? For. But I. Gregory, please. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Your Eminence, would you have a moment? I shouldn't really, Louis, as you can imagine. Rest assured, I've come just as a friend. No matter how I look at it, between my affection for you. In the conference, 
I can't hide my disappointment at your changing sides, Louis. With all due respect to Lord Mortimer, how could you follow him like this? I understand your disappointment, Your Eminence, but I have good reason to. Uh, it's got nothing to do with it, but... You... You didn't come and see me in my room a few hours ago, did you? Hmm. Does he remember anything? Uh, oh no. No, I I'm sorry. Y you must be mistaken. I've been speaking to Lord Mortimer in his study. I... Uh, I must have dreamed it then. It seems so real. Don't blame yourself, Your Eminence. We're all exhausted. I can assure you of that. That's very kind of you, Louis. I don't know what's wrong with me at the moment, but... I feel rather fragile. Poor man seems terrified. It'd be a good idea if I reassured him a little before trying to get him to change sides. Oh, what did you want from me exactly? It was so real. I... I don't understand it. Oh, Lord. Are you going to test me again? Tell me, Your Eminence, do you know anything about symbols and dreams? Come, Louis. The scriptural law rejects all divination through dreams. You ought to know that. Of course. I, I wasn't suggesting that these visions were messages from God, Your Eminence. But it might be that when we rest, our mind imagines situations based on things that left an impression on it. Take your dream, for example. What did it speak of? I'm not sure that I can speak about it. Don't worry, Your Eminence. There's no one else here but me. Well, I was right here, in my room, and you came to see me. Then it all became confusing. I know that Mr. Von Volner was here too. He... No, no, it's not possible. What was he doing? He tried to harm you. Damn it. He does have memories of what happened. Your Eminence, you have no reason to worry, because I'm right here in front of you, in perfect health. Yes. Yes, you are right. You're probably just a little tired. Overworked, that's all. That's it. Just a bit tired. Anyway, thank you for listening. Please excuse me, Louis, if I've wasted your time. You came to see me about the conference, I imagine. And here I go rambling on about uh, I don't know what nonsense. No need to apologize, Your Eminence. Think nothing of it. <sighs> what did you want to speak to me about? Right. It's now or never to get him to change his mind. Dear Lord, don't abandon me. I am your humble servant. Show me the way. Your Eminence, trust me. I have faith in Lord Mortimer. Let me show you the way- What did you say? That I have faith in Lord Mortimer? No. After. Show you the way? Yes, Louis. You must show me the way. Guide me into the light. Yes. Yes, Your Eminence. Come with me into the light. I... Yes. I must listen to my conscience. Yes. Listen to that little voice in your head. What does it say? Yes, Louis. I will vote for William's project. I will follow you. I'm sure it will mean a great deal to Lord Mortimer, Your Eminence. Once again. Thank you, my son. Please leave me now. I must pray. Of course, Your Eminence. I'll be on my way now. Poor man seems terrified. It'd be a good idea if I reassured him a little before trying to get him to change sides. Oh, what did you want from me exactly? It was so real. I... I don't understand it. Oh, Lord. Are you going to test me again? Tell me, Your Eminence. Have you ever been interested in no neuromancy? The interpretation of dreams, Louis? Well, I can't lend any credence to that sort of superstition. It's not serious, Louis. Yet, there was a time when it was said that manifestations were revealed to the prophets through their dreams. The God of Israel says, Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the ideas that come to you in dreams. Louis, 
It's been quite some time since we learned to be wary of this kind of interpretation. <sighs> All right, then. My mistake. Don't take this the wrong way, Louis. But I would like to be on my own just now. As I already said, I shouldn't even have opened the door to you. And I'm exhausted. I won't change my vote for the conference. I'm sorry for you. I... Yes, I'm sorry. Please excuse me, I, I didn't mean to bother you. I'll be on my way now. Damn it. I'll have to tell Mortimer that I didn't manage to convince Piaggi. Good. I think we can begin. You will vote in turn on the question that interests us today. Are you for or against the transfer of ownership of Louisiana from Spain to France? Your eminence? Against. Beneath your compassion, we take refuge, O oh Mother of God. Monseigneur, His Eminence Cardinal Piaggi. Your Eminence? Your. God damn it, Your Eminence! Damn, I can't feel his pulse. He's dead. What the hell is going on here? I've got to let Mortimer and Holm know about this. Can you tell us how you found him, Louis? I went to speak to him about the conference. I, I knocked on his door. As there was no answer, I, I went in and I, I saw him exactly where he is now. I took his pulse, but it was too late. William? Nothing to do with me, Gregory, if that's what you mean. And you? Of course not. Poor Giuseppe was with me. I had no interest in getting rid of him. Louis? Me? Of course not. No, I thought as much. I was wondering if you had any idea about what might have happened. I know who might have held a grudge against him. Really? And who might that be? Well, it's... it's awkward. Don't worry. You can talk in front of me, Louis. I gave no such order. And if it concerns one of my guests, I need to know their identity. Well, there's... Mr. Von Volner. Johan? Hmm. Continue, Louis. Why do you think Johan would have had a grudge against his eminence? I heard him making threats. When he tried to attack me earlier, Piaggi stepped in and... Mr. Von Volner swore he would get even. Gregory! Wait, William! You mustn't judge Johann prematurely. Under my roof! William, if Johann has anything to do with this tragedy, I demand the right to take care of it personally. He knew the rules, and I will not tolerate him attacking a guest like this. I'm asking you to let me handle it. It's against my better judgment, but... permission granted. Don't make a mess of it, though, or I'll take care of him personally. Very well. I'll be about my business. I will find out exactly how this happened. Thank you for informing us, Louis. I shall inform everyone that his eminence has had to return to the continent for personal reasons. I must ask you to keep it to yourself. If Von Volner is the murderer, what's going to happen to him? He may be Gregory's son. But if he hasn't departed within the hour, I'll take care of him myself. It will not be pretty. A lifetime as a masked servant should cleanse him of the desire to commit an act like that ever again in my house. Here comes Von Volner. With home, of course. The scoundrel wastes no time. What are you doing here? I promised you I would take care of Mr. Von Volner. Everything's under control, don't worry. Let me speak to him. Now, now. I told you, I will take care of Johan personally. Believe me, even though it pains me, he will pay the price. Now we're waiting for Duke Manuel, so would you leave us, please? Very well, but you'd better keep your word, sir. That is certainly my intention. And. Finally, 
Cardinal Piaggi has also decided to leave us and will not be able to attend the conference. His Eminence Piaggi paid dearly for disobeying His Holiness over his vote at the conference. It was consequently decided to withdraw him from diplomatic and political decision-making within the Papal States. It was rumored that his great age got the better of him, and he was sent to end his days in a Tuscan monastery, where he died two years later. His Eminence was obliged to justify himself on his return over the letter he had sent to His Holiness. His mental health was called into question, and consequently he was withdrawn from papal state power. It was said in polite undertones that he had been sent to a faraway retreat, the better to hide his anonymous confinement in an asylum of Rome. His Eminence Piaggi, Having successfully accomplished his mission, returned to His Holiness the Pope with full honors. Although all his ambitions had become possible, to the stupefaction of his entourage, the Cardinal preferred to retire to his Tuscan monastery, far from all political and diplomatic commitments. Fascinated by the techniques of exorcism and demonology, he dedicated the last years of his life to the study of Inquisition reports.